Hello everyone and welcome back to another day of Road to TCG World 2017 where we are going to be featuring the Zoroark Drampa deck which um, got some play in Madison and got some play in Birmingham as well and this deck actually managed to get second place only behind Alex Dow's Gyarados list so yeah I mean in a field full of a wide variety of decks we are seeing I think the healthiest and most varied format for the TCG in quite a long time, at least for the standard format. I don't know, it feels really like there's so much variety and even though the game feels very matchup based, therefore who you get paired up against will probably decide how you do at the tournament. Um, decks are like, there's a, we're getting a lot of room for creativity from these like new stage twos and stage ones getting played. It's no longer 100% focused on basics and, and speed. We are seeing setup decks. We are seeing high HP stage two decks getting played. So I'm really looking forward to Mexico City this weekend. And I'm sure Zorak Drampa will make an appearance. Um, Zorak, uh, stand-in is a great ability. Saves you from having to, <clears throat> to switch and whatnot. You get to promote Zoroark immediately, as long as it's on your bench. And Mindjack deals 10 damage plus 30 more damage for each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. Now, there's very, very few decks at the moment that actually do not um, end up filling up their bench at some point or another. So Mindjack just deals an insane amount of damage for only a DCE. And then we also have Zoroark Break, which foul play allows you to copy any of your opponent's active Pokemon's attacks. So you get to copy a wide variety of attacks as we are seeing a wide variety of decks. And for a single Darkness Energy, you, do, you don't even have to pay for the attack's cost. Um, your Sword Arc also gets an extra 140, an extra 40 HP rather. So nothing to scoff at. And the Psychic Resistance you already have off of the Sword Arc is always pretty awesome. The only bad part is Foul Play cannot copy GX attacks, but it's a small trade-off. Now we are using the Moon, Moonless Madness Sorua because Confusion could come in clutch at any given point in the game. We have two Drampas as a way to deal some extra damage, put some extra pressure on special energy cards with Sprite to Sedge, and Big Wheel as a great setup attack. We also have two Tapu Leles in order to set up and a 1-1 Octillery line in order to keep drawing cards and make ourselves less prone to N in the late game. Now the supporter cards are actually very interesting, there's, as you can see, a huge variety of supporter cards. We see 3 Sycamore, 3N, 2 Professor Kukui, 1 Teammate, 2 Bridget, 1 Delinquent, 1 Hala, 1 Hex Maniac, and 2 Lysander. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 supporters were before we were seeing between 6 and 7 supporters as the maximum and the rest items. So, this is what Garbodor is doing. Garbodor is making players think about how they build their decks, think, think about what cards are truly essential and what which aren't, and just focusing on more supporters. And that supporter heavy focus means the game slows down a little bit. So that's really good because you can only play one of those during your turn. Now for via Seeker to use all these awesome uh, supporter cards, one special charge to recover the rainbow energy or the DCE. <coughs> Uh, to uh, rescue stretcher in order to recover attackers and three choice bands and two float stone um, the energy lineup is pretty interesting the rainbow energy are there to try and activate berserk and um, they don't really clash with anything and they could even let you use tapu cure in a weird scenario where it might be useful and you have four double colorless of course because Trump and Zora can really use them as well as tapu lele and the four basic darkness energies so that's the deck list now let's jump into a ladder and give it a try for a couple of games um yesterday we featured metagross tomorrow we are featuring so yesterday and today was both second place decks tomorrow will be the first place Vespiquen Zorak deck, which Michael Pranawa did use to win Madison, Wisconsin Regionals. And we get a pretty okay start. We actually get a pretty okay start. Actually, never mind. No, this hand is not great. Uh, Bridget is the only thing making this hand viable, really. And 
We are up against Vespiguin, apparently. From the from the previous screen, I kind of assumed that. Um, but the Klefki just confirms it. There's no other deck that can really utilize Klefki. And no Mega Pokemon are getting played at all at this point in time, other than perhaps Mega Ray. And Mega Ray has pretty much an ability that allows it to act as a basic-ish Pokemon, in the sense that Rayquaza EX can immediately evolve into Mega Rayquaza EX. Now we do see an Ultra Ball for a combi. We do see a Choice Band, a Float Stone, and we see a Sycamore. A clean Sycamore, so not bad for my opponent. Not a bad start for sure. Uh, retreating Klefki is great, so that he can pressure us with a potential turn to Vespiquin. Um, he will have enough Pokemon in the discard pile in order to do so. So the Bridget now more than ever will be pretty important. There's another combi, there's another acrobike. I imagine he wants to attach the Klefki to the unknown, but it doesn't really matter. Just decides to retreat into the combi in order to use the ability Wanderlock and then he will use Farewell Letter in order to draw an extra card. Maybe trying to hit a Vespiquen, there's an Ultra Ball, maybe trying to go for a Shaman. To draw more cards. No, he actually had a shaman in his hand. So he's gonna go for the Vespiquen. Now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's already seven Pokemon in the discard pile. We see a DC on the bench Vespiquen and a pass. So really interesting to see my opponent not evolve the active Vespiquen. And I kinda want a drum, I think. Just so I can pressure the the DCs much more easily and that's why I'm also not gonna attach the energy because this Zoro is most likely just not surviving the turn. <coughs> but getting the Trump out in order to pressure the TC seems pretty good. And then for my opponent right here is really awesome because we definitely didn't have a good hand. Uh, we were relying on the next three cards uh, off of Kukui to do something, but now we actually get a Zorark, we get a DCE, and we get Octillery and another Trampa, so we're actually in a pretty good position now. No Vespiguin yet from my opponent, I guess he really doesn't want to trade a DCE for a Zorua. That would be my guess. He might try to Lysander first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But there's a DC. Okay. So he. But with one special charge in the discard pile already, that really does pressure his DCs. I really think it does pressure. Now, do I take a knockout with Zoroark or. Yeah, I think Drampa is the right play because 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, yeah. It's gonna be really hard for him to get a knockout off of the Drampa. I really think it's gonna be hard for him. Whoops, <laughs> I wanted to attach Octillery to Drampa, no. I wanted to evolve into Octillery and attach the Choice Band to Drampa. Now I'm going to use a Pizzle Hand for an extra 3 cards. Hopefully play our first supporter, yes. We can end. We can Sycamore, but I don't think I want to Sycamore. Um, I could Lysander. <coughs> I could actually Lysander to get the TCE off of the, <coughs> the Vespiquen with the Choice Band. Because 1, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 13. He still needs 5 more Pokemon in the discard pile in order for Drampa to be knocked out. Hmm, I mean, I could delinquent as well to get rid of resources from my opponent, Hex Maniac. I really think probably delinquent is the best play here, just to pressure my opponent's hand. Um, thankfully with Octillery I have enough resources in that, like enough energy acceleration, and I have energy in my hand, so I don't really need to pressure him that much wow <coughs> I 
I discarded, well, he discarded a Sycamore and two Lysander. That's the fourth Sycamore and two Lysander already in the discard pile. I really wonder what my opponent had in his hand that justified discarding those cards. I guess the Stadium and be a Seeker, and he was gonna Sycamore anyways, but as I mentioned, right here, right now, my opponent can't really pressure the Drampa too much. And he only has one extra Pokemon in the discard pile. <coughs> two, sorry, from the previous turn. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yep, that's fine. Uh, that's the second TC, third TC on the bench right there. Um, <coughs> I could potentially either sacrifice the Trampa and then take a knockout with Zoroark. That seems like the better choice, maybe. Mm, prevents my opponent from getting too easy prizes. Because um, I do want to end him, but... Hmm. No, I'm gonna go for the, for the stand-in knockout. So I'm gonna Abyssal Hand here. And get Kukui and Via Seeker. Via Seeker could once again get rid of resources from my opponent. Um, resources he could be conserving or trying to conserve in order to secure knockouts. But he just discards Pokemon though. <clears throat> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 7 cards in the deck, 5 prize cards, and 6 in the current hand. Okay. Uh, two item cards, Floatstone and Combi. So I'm just gonna stand in and take a knockout here. Mind Jack deals 130 damage, so more than enough to deal with the Vespiquen, and we get our first prize card. But we're playing to run my opponent out of resources, that's what we're trying to do. Sure, he gets a knockout on Zoroark, but that's a 30 CE. He's played one special charge already. Oh, well, there's the second one. So now that's going to be a little bit harder here. Um, revitalizer to get back a Vespiquen line, which makes sense. Zero card. Oh, no, one card in hand, though. Is it Lysander? Is it Via Seeker? What could it be? Doesn't matter that much. He's going to take a knockout anyways. Uh, but I would really, really like to to attack with this trump, I think. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 14, 17. Okay, and there's a Lysander. So he's gonna choose to knock out the Drampa over knocking out Sword. Which I think I am okay with. <coughs> Three DC left for my opponent. So I'm gonna promote Drampa, but I'm probably going to take a knockout with Stand In. <coughs> I can end my opponent, though I don't think that helps me too much. So I'm actually just going to Sycamore. I mean, yeah. I'm just gonna get Lele and Sycamore. Three prize cards for my opponent. I need to set up more Zoroarks. And yeah, no other supporter really makes a difference. I could teammates, but I don't think it matters. I will rescue stretcher. Nah, I'm just gonna save them right here. <clears throat> I get two DCEs. I get another Zoroark. I could Righteous Edge with Drampa. But 1, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So two more. Or a Choice Band gets my opponent the knockout on the Drampa. So I think I'm just better off trading with my Zoroark at this point in time. 
<clears throat> I'm probably going to have to end my opponent eventually. To get him down to one card and hope he whiffs the Fiat Seeker. Which doesn't seem too likely. But he has used three Via Seekers and two Lysanders, so he should only have one Via Seeker left. There's a Rua, there's Vespiquen, there's a Klefki. And the last card. Wow, no DCE for my opponent. <clears throat> no DCE for my opponent. We know at least two of the six cards in his deck are DCEs. That much we do know. I don't have Lysander here in order to try to take advantage of this situation. So I'm gonna attach the energy to the Trampa. I mean, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna rescue Stretcher and put the cards back into the deck. And then I'm gonna attach the Floatstone to the Octillery. And I'm going to use Octillery's Abyssal Hand because if I can Lysander up the Vespiquen. Oh, oh. I actually got it, that's crazy. So now, even if he knocks me out with Vespiquen, he's gonna be down to zero Vespiquens. Um, obviously, Sorark can also attack. But we see one Sorark in the discard pile. So... He must have at least one more. We do see a Via Seeker, and we will see an N. And I am okay with that, simply because I have Octillery, and... Now my opponent has half his deck in his hand, but he doesn't have... Um, oh, he whiffed? Are you serious? He doesn't have... Um, wow. My opponent doesn't have or hasn't shown another Zoroark. So there's two things that can happen here. I could just <clears throat> choose to not KO. I wonder if he does have one more Zoroark. Maybe it could be priced, but if he hasn't evolved yet, I'm actually just not gonna take a knockout here. 140 doesn't really make a difference. Uh, the extra energy could make a difference, so I'm actually just not going to attack. I think. Unless I find a Via Seeker, which I do. Okay. So never mind. I will take a knockout on the. <clears throat> on the Vespiquen. That's that makes the most sense because now I force him to have um there's a victory, yeah. So I forced him to have DC and Zoroark to take a knockout. Whereas before he only needed DC and two at least two of the three cards in his deck were DCs. I'm going to assume one DC was priced. Like you have to at this point, based on how he was playing and yeah my opponent whiffed so many times if he hadn't whiffed that many times he probably would have taken the match we're taking very likely at least two more prize cards at least two more prize cards not entirely sure but no worries i mean i really don't know what to use for mexico city regionals i want to get all the videos for this week recorded today so monday <clears throat> even though i'm still sick I, I really want to push myself and get the videos recorded this for this week at least um like maybe maybe i won't do tcg pokedex maybe those i can record later but i really want to practice there's just so many decks i need to to try out and so many decks i want to play and metagross kind of is one of them but kind of isn't either and hello um, Martial W, thank you for <laughs> for all the love, and we get an okay-ish start. Um, <clears throat> Lele for Bridget sounds nice because we do have the two Zoroarks, but we don't have anything else after that. Oh, never mind. We actually have the Big Will GX attack, so I might just do that. And we do see a double EV start for my opponent, so I will Bridget. I guess two Bridget in this deck. Is simply to to make your bench like really really big and off of Bridget I'm gonna grab two Zeruas and maybe not the Remoraid maybe the second Trampa no definitely the Remoraid I think yeah 
Remoraid, I will attach the energy to the Trampa and I will pass. And that's okay. Um, I have a double Zorark and I can beat Will GX. You don't really mind too much missing off, missing out on energy drops with this deck. I really hope my opponent doesn't evolve immediately into Espion and knocks me out. Or not knocks me out, confuses me rather. Um, it could also be Sylvian, but I'm, I don't think it's Sylvian right here. I really don't think it is. And we see a Null Trouble. So yeah, definitely not Sylvian. Definitely some sort of... Well, discards another EV and a Zoroark. I mean, a, <laughs> a Sycamore. <laughs> Sorry, Sycamore, Zoroark. My bad. And yeah. What does my opponent have in store for us? Okay, so it is Espion uh, Garbodor, the deck that I did use at Seattle Regionals for a 33rd bubble place, and we see an end, so not too shabby. I'm really happy with the turn one Bridget now then. <clears throat> really, really happy. So there's a shuffle, we find Octillery, we find Zoroark, we find Hala even, and we find a DCE. So if for some reason my opponent doesn't evolve the AV, in the active slot, we can actually just take a knockout right here. And even if we Hala for 4 cards, we also have Octillery as support draw, so it's pretty good. It's honestly a pretty good deal for us, and yep, there's just a simple pass now. So, Operation, um, I don't want to use item cards anymore. And <clears throat> with the Rainbow Energy, I could definitely see myself not using Hala this turn. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, I'm just gonna pass on the Hala. I'm gonna go Berserk on my opponent and get a prize card. And via Seeker, that's fine. The other EV is promoted. But, yeah, I mean, we would need a lot of things. We would need Kukui and a Choice Band to get a knockout on an SPN, so probably not very likely. Might not be SPN, but it makes no sense to run just Garb Evolutions. I really feel like SPN is probably a, a part of the deck. Uh, we do see a switch this card though, that's pretty interesting. To see a switch, why, why would you play switch in that deck? Okay, so my opponent finds another EV. And we see another Trubbish, and we see a Lele drop for a clean Sycamore, I would imagine. A clean, clean Sycamore. And yep, there it is. There it is. It is perfectly fine though. Perfectly, perfectly fine. If I could somehow find a Choice Band, I could actually knock out the Lele. There we see the Energy Evolution. So now we need a TC to punish the confusion, or rather not to punish the confusion, but to actually... Or I could get um, the Zorark break and confuse my opponent's Espion myself. So maybe that's the right play here. Um, I took it on then. And do I just say come on away all these resources? I will power up Garbodor by two more item cards. But I feel like getting closer to the Zorak break is definitely the right call here. And that's not gonna happen, but I do, however, find the Flowstone. So I will be able to stand in, remove the Confusion, and swing for 150 thanks to the Rainbow Energy. So the extra damage, like just because his bench is filled up, Probably won't be too significant at all, but it's never it's never bad to have the extra damage. A DC will knock me out. A DC will definitely knock me out. Um. Yep, there's a DC. <clears throat> be a seeker for N. Yep, be a seeker for N. That's fine. We get the same amount of cards and I mean odds are we will find some sort of energy or whatever in order to take a knockout. 
As long as we don't have to use any more item cards, we are good here. Wow, I actually do not find any item card, I mean any energy. See the Garbo Toxin Carb come into play. So that will actually delay our artillery, make, mess with our artillery rather. And he attaches a choice band, a float stone, <coughs> and takes a knockout with Psychic. He didn't need the choice band, guessing he's preparing for a counter N, just to thin out the deck a little bit more. Uh, but we do have the knockout with the Sword Art Break, so that's pretty cool. And see, if I do that, he will only deal 1, 2, 3. 60 damage back and if he attacks with Garbodor, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, we can just take continuous knockouts with Sorak Break. So what's the play here? I mean either I Sycamore, he's already played one field blower so odds of finding the other field blowers are not too high. So I guess I will Sycamore, just because I can continue to set up my, my board. And there we go. I do find Drampa, but I really don't think I want to play it down anymore. Uh, no. I'm just gonna do this. I really should be in a good position here. Oh ho ho! It's letting me copy Divide GX. I don't think that's possible. I think it was ruled that you can't, but the fact that PTCGO allows you to, maybe? I don't know. I mean, PTCGO is never an official ruling, but it's it's nice to know that it's there, that it's a, it's a possibility. Now, we have Sycamore to possibly take a knockout on the Garb. Uh, we do see a Lele who's going to pressure us for only 60 damage, which is fine. And we do see an N, which is not ideal because we have the Lysander already, but we still have the Seekers, we have Lysander, and we find a full Zorak break line. So <clears throat> now, energy drive deals 60 damage. Now we are going to use. Um, wow, I top deck the sickle. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Um, with the choice band, I'm dealing 160, so Professor Kukui would have been incredible here. Maybe I can copy the GX attack later on, maybe I won't be able to, but that's okay. So I'm just gonna mind jack here. Yep, 10 short. We're still putting a ton of pressure though, so we're good. I only used 3 item cards, 3 total item cards. Here's a Psychic on the SPN, um, might try to confuse me, I wouldn't fault him, for, fault him for that. We will see another N, I will eventually draw the Field Lords, I hope. Uh, but yeah, Confusion is going to be really, really sucky here. Yep, there's a Choice Band, which doesn't make a difference actually. And, I mean... Can I copy Divide GX or not? I'm pretty sure I can't. Like in a real life tournament match, I'm pretty sure I would not be able to do that. And we will see a side beam for 10 damage. Now I get a null trouble. I get a null trouble. I really don't want to risk the confusion though. I might. I might just want to confuse him myself with this horror break for now and I'm gonna save the DC just in case I'm not gonna play the hex I'm just gonna foul play and I'm gonna side beam himself side beam him myself so that makes it awkward for him to continue to attack with the SPN and Garbodor is really not pressuring us at all and he can't do... well, he could retreat into Lele to... No, he wouldn't even be able to get a knockout with Lele. Because I have 140 HP, so... Scrappy game here, in the middle of the game, but we are getting damage on my opponent's Pokémon. 
and a psychic would deal 90, 70, yeah, a, a psychic head flip would actually be enough to knock me out. But we see the energy on the bench, <sighs> on the bench carburetor, and he successfully confuses us. Now, just one more bench Pokemon would allow us to knock out the Espion. Or would allow me, rather, to knock out the Espion. Um, there's no reason for me to stay here. So... So, so, so... Just gonna promote. The other Zoroark break, and I'm gonna attach the Dark. And I'm gonna foul play Psychic this time around. For 120 damage. I'm doing this so I have the TC. Like, maybe he could even try to Lysander the Octillery to try to buy himself a turn, so that way I could retreat that guy. And yeah, having only played three item cards is pretty crazy, honestly. Pretty, pretty crazy. Okay, there's the Garb, and he's gonna go for the uh, for the Acid Spray attack. So my opponent playing a more conservative game, um, I do resist, he does get heads, but I do have the TC to return the knockout. There's a Kukui, finally. <coughs> finally, which probably doesn't matter at this point, so I might as well just draw extra cards. Uh, special charge is actually a pretty nice card in this scenario, <clears throat> which I will play. That only adds 10 dam 20 damage to Garbodor's attack. And I'm just gonna uh, mind jack, sorry. <laughs> Stand in is the ability. Mind jack just gets a knockout outright. And now it's coming down to a Lysander for the win. <coughs> it's really coming down to a Lysander for the win in order to knock out the. The Espion or the Lele. A Tapu Kogo promo would be amazing here because that would allow us to knock out the Tapu Lele. Although we would need to find that and a DCE and have my opponent knock something out. So as long as he's not taking knockouts, we are good. Level bolts in, the, in my opponent's deck are pretty weird, honestly. Um, he's gonna try for the Acid Spray once again and gets another head. So he's gotten heads on Confusion, on. And on two acid sprays in a row. On two acid sprays in a row. Now, N will probably hurt me more than help me, so I'm just gonna. Uh, Kukui, I actually cannot find Field Blower, nor another DCE. So all I can do is pass. I do have the VS Seeker to Lysander for the win, but I don't have the DCE I really need. Touches Choice Man to Espion and passes, so yeah, like, my opponent just really doesn't have anything, and I top deck the DCE, so I'm just gonna Lysander the Lele, and I'm going to win with Mind Jack, so yeah, this is Sora Drampa, guys, it, it seems like a pretty good deck, um, a lot of things do have really big benches, so it makes sense for... For Zoroark to be this powerful, and then you get access to Foul Play um, off of Zoroark Break or whatever the attack name is, where you can copy, yeah, it is Foul Play, where you can copy your opponent's attacks and use them against them. And like that really punishes Garbodor players from playing too many item cards when they thought like they weren't in that big of a threat. Uh, you have resistance, and the deck is built towards countering Garbodor using less item cards and more supporter cards. So, yeah. That will be all for me today guys, please don't forget to like on the video if you can. Tomorrow we are doing Vespiquen Zoroark, so Zoroark action everywhere. On Thursday, I still don't know what deck I'll be doing, possibly Tapu, Tapu Bulu Vikabolt, um, possibly a review of Ninetales, which did place well in Birmingham, and yeah, I'll figure it out. Thank you guys so much for watching, I will see you guys tomorrow, bye bye.